question, which is climate change and country environmental analysis, to discuss the case of Indonesia. Helena Alnaber will make the presentation. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my presentation will be in two parts. The first part will discuss very briefly uh, the climate change. It will, uh, it will uh, provide an overview of the country environmental analysis at the World Bank. And then I will move quickly to the Indonesia uh, CEA. Uh, the country environmental analysis was introduced in the World Bank in 2001, um, uh, environment strategy, after a call to, uh, systematically, um, for systematic country diagnostic studies. And the CEAs aim to integrate environmental considerations into country assistance strategies, poverty reduction strategy papers, and development policy lending by linking national environmental priorities and sustainable growth and poverty reduction priorities. Priorities. Uh, the CA at the World Bank it consists or it builds on three building blocks. The first one is the identification of environmental development priorities through, uh, for example, cost of environmental degradations, uh, surveys, um, adjusted net savings, and so on. Uh, the second block looks at the broad assessment of environmental policies and institutions. So it looks at formal and informal rules. How is the uh, public participation, access to information, and so on at the national level as well as at the sub-national level. And the third building block is analysis of specific environmental priorities and themes that have been identified in block one. Uh, today there are 45 CAs that have been either completed on ongoing or planned, and about half of the CAs are within the Africa and uh, Latin America and the Caribbean region. Uh, the <coughs> World Bank CAs have addressed so far climate change by looking at it from two, um, from two different viewpoints or two different approaches. One is climate change uh, has implications for the identified priority sectors. An example of that is the India Northeast Region CA, which looked at climate change through the priority sectors that it identified, which are the water resources and the forestry. And then climate change is identified as one of the priority areas in itself, and <coughs> that would impact the growth and development of the country. And examples of that are Central African Republic CA, which identified growth that is resilient to climate change as one of the CA priority themes. Then there is the Philippine CA, which focused on climate variability and impacts. Uh, then you have the Timor-Leste, the CA, which is example of a post-conflict country that also identified climate change as a priority and mainly from adaptation, <laughs> vulnerability and adaptation. And Indonesia CA, which, will <coughs> which I'll be discussing now, and which identified climate change as the new national priority that is relevant to Indonesia's growth and development. Uh, the Indonesia CA was carried out between February 2007 and December 2009, and it was in three phases, scoping, analysis, and dissemination. Uh, the CA was prepared within the context of the national government new five-year development planning cycle and the development of the new country partnership strategy for fiscal year 2009-2012. The objectives of the Indonesia CA were highlight underlying changes and opportunities for Indonesia's environment and management of its natural resources, and guide World Bank support to Indonesian institutions for more sustainable development. <coughs> How was the climate change identified as a priority? Uh, the CA team put a number of criteria that would help them to identify the priority area that the CA would address. Uh, from the Indonesian perspective, it was the magnitude of the economic cost of degradation was one major criteria. From the criteria of um, a development agency like the World Bank, there was <coughs> the comparative advantage to work on a particular problem, whether the problem is already being adequately addressed by development partners, potential for achieving significant impact, and opportunities for mobilizing financial resources for change. 
Uh, based on the cost, uh, economic cost of degradation, two priorities were identified. One was climate change, which constitutes the biggest long-term environmental threat to the Indonesian economy, significant potential for both mitigation and adaptation. <coughs> it's an area where the World Bank has a comparative advantage, and uh, incre there is increasing donor and market resources that are available to tackle the climate change. Uh, for this reason, the climate change was selected. The other area that was identified <coughs> with the high economic cost of degradation uh, is the water and sanitation. However, there were many uh, separate analyses that looked at it. Uh, so for this reason, the Indonesia CA addressed two sets of priorities. One was the environmental governance, and the other looked at the sectoral challenges facing climate change, including vulnerability and adaptation, and from the perspective of mitigation, land use and climate change, and energy and climate change. Uh, so the vulnerability and adaptation issues that the CEA identified where the specific areas of Indonesia are highly vulnerable to multiple climate change hazards, for example, drought, floods, floods landslides, and sea level rises. Uh, more intense rainfall and sea level rise will negatively affect food security, water resources, coastal areas, farming and coastal livelihoods, forests, marine biodiversity, and health. <coughs> People and ecosystems are especially vulnerable to climate risks on Java, Bali, parts of Sumatra, and the large area of Papua. Climate change will have the most impact on the poorest Indonesians, who are more likely to be living in marginal areas that are susceptible to drought, flooding, and landslides, dependent on climate-sensitive agriculture, and have fewer assets to cope with the impacts of a climate change. <coughs> The annual benefit of avoided damage from climate change is likely to exceed the annual cost by 2050, and by 2100, the benefit could reach 1.6% of GDP compared to the cost of <coughs> estimated at 0.12% of GDP. So the adaptation options that were identified by CEA was to undertake reactive and proactive adaptation measures in the key areas of water resources, agriculture, forestry, coastal marine, and health, including and in addition to what is currently contemplated, prioritize adaptation options by emphasizing no regrets actions that provide benefits even without climate change and implement a phased strategy to mainstream adaptation, including complementary efforts to raise public awareness. <coughs> uh, the land issues that were identified by the CEA, uh, there are high rates of deforestation, illegal logging, forest fires, and peatland degradation constitute the single largest source of Indonesia's greenhouse gas emissions and have made it one of the world's principal emitters. Ten provinces account for 78% of dry forest loss <coughs> and 96% of swamp forest loss as well as related emissions, with just Rio, Central Kalimantan, and South Sumatra accounting for over half of all losses and emissions. Although there is uncertainty about the magnitude of such emissions, there is consensus that forestry and land use are key priorities for mitigation. Land use options implement no regrets options for forest law enforcement, management, and governance, realigned incentives for timber harvesting, revitalization of forest sector industries on a more sustainable basis, control of forest fires, and greater accountability, equity, and transparency in forest or land use decisions, and pursue new sources of forest carbon financing in order to support and accelerate the no regrets options. Energy issues. In the future, fossil fuel emissions will be a greater concern than forest and land use emissions. Current energy subsidies will make it more difficult to promote efficiency, cleaner technology, or innovation for environmental and climate benefits. Indonesia uses fuel and electricity inefficiently and in excess. <laughs> the country has the world's largest potential for developing geothermal power, sustainable and other renewables, example, hydropower, wind, solar, and biomass, fossil fuel, greenhouse gas emissions per capita and emissions intensity, while low at present are rapidly increasing, and even assuming a decrease <coughs> in energy intensity, emissions from energy consumption will triple by 2030 from 2005 levels. 
energy options be guided by high level planning and coordination for a lower carbon development scenario <clears throat> to reduce the emissions intensity of growth and go beyond existing plans to introduce more efficient energy pricing, encourage investment to develop renewables energy resources, accelerate energy efficiency in key emitting sectors, and take advantage of international financing mechanisms to offset the cost of some of these options. Results from the Indonesia CEA, the process of the preparation of the Indonesia CEA contributed towards inclusion of environmental sustainability and disaster management as a core engagement area in the new country partnership strategy. It was key input for policy briefs for the new government on environment and climate change and an important resource for development of Indonesia's first climate change DPL, development policy lending. Thank you. Well, thank you very much.